Finally, I have my hands on a Ryzen 4000 series laptop, which is an absolute powerhouse. It's also cool, at least by comparison, and it's just a really, really impressive machine, both from a CPU and a general laptop perspective. So in this video, I wanna take you through it, show you what the new CPUs can do, and of course, the laptop itself. But first, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So this is an Asus Zephyrus G14. You can buy this with a number of different Ryzen 4th generation mobile CPU options, but the one I have is the highest end, the 4900H. That's an 8 core 16 thread chip that, at least in this thin and light machine anyway, can boost all the way up to 3.7 gigahertz on all cores, uh, only draws about 54 watts while doing that at 100% load, and hits a peak temperature of 89 degrees Celsius, which, while that does sound hot, compared to the Intel offerings I usually test, they sit, or they peak at like 99 to 100 degrees. Now, horsepower is not something that this machine lacks. While I had it, I tested MSI's Alpha 50. 15, a Ryzen 3750H based machine, which is a quad core with eight threads, with Blender's BMW render test, as well as Cinebench, so that I could make this comparison. Now, I also threw in an older MSI laptop rocking an i7-8750H, which while not the current uh, generation is still fairly similarly in terms of its performance numbers to the current generation. So take those numbers with an extra bit of salt, but either way, let's take a look at the Blender results. So as you can see, the new Ryzen chip was over twice as fast as the 8750H and almost three times as fast as the last gen 3750H, which I know the chip, the, the core counts don't quite match up. The Intel chip is a six core and the older Ryzen chip is a quad core, but still it's incredibly impressive. What's even more impressive though, is that I actually put two desktop chips on this chart too. The first one is its sort of bigger brother, the 3700X, which as you expect, does perform a little bit better here, although not by all that much. But the more impressive one is the desktop 9700KF, which bear in mind is a, a desktop chip that draws 138 watts when doing this test and the new Ryzen chip beats it. Now, it doesn't beat it by all that much, but considering this is a mobile CPU that draws 54 watts at peak and is in this tiny of a chassis, that's just incredible. And Cinebench is the same story. The 4900H's single-threaded performance here is only a few points off of the desktop chips, and it's miles ahead of the other mobile options. In the multi-threaded scores, again, you're seeing the 4900H uh, just uh, outperform those mobile chips by a significant margin, in fact, well over double for both of them. And then, of course, not quite keeping up with its desktop counterpart, the 3700X, but I believe actually beating the 9700KF here, which is incredibly, incredibly impressive. When it comes to gaming, sadly, I can't test these chips side by side since the Zephyrus G14 uses the Max-Q version, the slightly underclocked version of the RTX 2060. Now that still means that you get great performance as we're gonna take a look at, but means you can't directly compare. Either way, let's take a look at some of those performance numbers. So starting off with Battlefield 5 on ultra settings with DirectX 12 enabled, we have 70 FPS average with a 1% low of 32 FPS. That's not too bad, of course this is on ultra settings, so if you wanted to make the most of the 120Hz display, you could turn those settings down just a little bit. When it comes to PUBG, we're getting 88 FPS average, again on ultra settings, testing on the Sanok map, and a much better 1% low of round it up 63 FPS. When it comes to Fortnite, this is a very similar engine to PUB and therefore a fairly similar result, 95 FPS average, again on epic settings with multi-core rendering enabled, and a very good 1% low of just shy of 70 FPS, so all pretty good there. Oh, and while we're talking about performance, I thought I should mention the power draw. Now, I've already talked about the 4900H's 54 4 watts of peak power draw, but what's interesting is that the A750H peaks at about 70 watts. Now it does almost immediately thermal throttle and then roll back to about six, between 50 and 60 watts, but it's kind of impressive to see just how efficient this thing is. So you've heard how amazing the CPU is, but what about the rest of the laptop? Well, that's pretty good too. Starting off the display, my model has the 1080p 120Hz panel, although you can opt for a 1440p 60Hz one if you'd prefer. 
Personally, I really like the 120 hertz option as it means you get a really smooth and responsive experience, both while just, you know, browsing the web, but probably more importantly, while gaming too. Now both are IPS level, which means you get some pretty impressive viewing angles and colors, although we'll talk about colors more in a second. And in terms of the panel itself, it's actually pretty fast. You don't have all that much ghosting here, which is great. And in terms of its black to white response time, you're looking at anywhere between five and eight milliseconds, which is pretty good for a laptop panel. Now it does have a little bit of a sort of slow release time, a slow uh, white to black time of somewhere between 15 and 20 milliseconds, but honestly, it's not something I, I noticed while playing games, and so not a big deal. Now, unfortunately, the input lag isn't fantastic. Of course, because this is a laptop, the only way I can measure that is with uh, sort of total systems, so from a uh, mouse click to a gun firing on screen, and that took anywhere between 50 and 60 milliseconds, which is definitely on the slow side. It's not something, again, I noticed while playing, but it's certainly something to, to bear in mind. Although the more laptops I test with this, that seems to be a fairly standard number, so not the biggest deal in the world. And lastly for the display, it's colors. Like I mentioned, it's actually pretty decent. I was assessing with my Spider X as usual, and it reported a 93% coverage of the sRGB spectrum, which is not too bad. Of course, it's not uh, perfect. You'd like to see 100% there or higher and better representation on the Adobe RGB and DCI-P3 spectrums. But what's impressive to me is how color accurate this came out of the box. The calibration barely changed changed any colors here, so if you did want to do some light, you know, content creation while traveling, for example, this would still be a decent option. Moving on to the keyboard, it's actually pretty nice. Now, it's a non-ISO layout, which for me as a Brit is a little annoying, but I think I could get used to it because the typing feel is actually pretty good. The keys have a good amount of travel to them, and while they are a little on the mushy side, you know, rubber dome kind of thing, that's generally how it is, it's actually a nice enough typing experience that, like I said, I could get used to it fairly quickly. The same can be said for the trackpad. It has a really Really nice surface on top is just generally nice to use, has all the gestures you'd expect, and so it gets a thumbs up from me. Now the I.O. is a, a little sparse here. You do have two USB Type-C ports, one of which can be used as a display port out, as well as an HDMI, and two USB Type-A ports, as well as DC in and a four-pole headphone jack, although it would have been nice to see an SD card reader here, especially for people who want to use this machine as a sort of creative machine while on the go as well as gaming, but Overall, still not too bad. Now a look inside reveals the pretty impressive cooling solution up at the top for both the CPU and the GPU here, which does get a little on the noisy side while especially gaming, although it's mostly just fan noise, so not too big a deal. You also have the single M.2 SSD here, in my case it's a one terabyte model, and a single stick of DDR4 3200 MHz RAM, so no dual channel, but nice and fast for that Ryzen chip. You'll also see the 76 6 watt hour battery, which thanks to the new Ryzen chip, even at maximum screen brightness, you still get over five hours of battery life, which is quite frankly incredible for a machine that's this thin, light, and powerful. You can, of course, dim the screen brightness and change a few settings to get a, a good bit more usage out of it, but again, very, very impressive. It's also pretty reasonably priced too. Now, it's not cheap by any stretch of the imagination, but I think for the, the sort of category it's in, for the, the features and performance you get, I think that it sits at a pretty good price point. Now it does depend on the model you go with and the region you're in as well. Uh, so if you do want to check out the model that I have and see pricing when and where you watch this, do take a look at the top link in the description down below. That will be an Amazon affiliate link that will take you to your local Amazon store. We can see all that good stuff. But either way, this definitely gets a big thumbs up from me. I'm honestly finding it really hard to find things that I don't like about it. I mean, build quality is fantastic. It's a, a metal keyboard player and a sort of bottom shell and so it just feels really nice just build quality you know, big thumbs up there uh, styling is something that I really like on this machine especially in this white model the top of the clamshell just looks fantastic the overall user experience with it is great the display is really nice to use keyboard trackpad too um, like I said, it's light and makes it really easy to be portable. And of course you get all of the performance with it too from both the CPU and the GPU as well. So 
yeah, this just gets a massive thumbs up from me. And of course, those are my thoughts. I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of the G14 and obviously the Ryzen 4950H? Do let me know in those comments down below. Now, like I said, if you want to see more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, do make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell notification icon. And if you want to check out the G14 and see pricing when and where you watch this, like I said, affiliate link in the description down below. Otherwise, there's a load of other links in the description down below you can check out too, from stuff like merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one to other affiliate links for people like Overclocks UK. There's also a load of other stuff, including VPN options too, so do check them out. You can also check out some more videos over there. I'll try and leave the MSI Alpha 15 review so you can see how that one compares. And otherwise, if you have any questions, do leave those in the comments down below. We'll see you all in the next video.